was the most significant fight of the year so far in women's boxing. Chantelle Cameron beating Katie Taylor in Dublin in May. And we're heading back to the Irish capital for the rematch in November, November the 25th to be precise. And everything points to another raucous night to remember. And just reflecting before we look at some of the highlights of their respective careers, Barry, Cameron on that night in that atmosphere showed tremendous strength in terms of mind and body. Yeah, she did, because you don't forget that she might be the champion, but she was the B-side on that. Let's not forget that. You know, that, that was the homecoming of the great Katie Taylor. Just boxing Katie Taylor anyway is always a hard task because she always brings a massive crowd, but the boxer in Dublin, you know, <laughs> the homecoming, it was all geared up for her. You know, that, that takes a mental strength. You could swallow that going into the ring. You might be all confident coming into the fight, but that ring walk, when you hear that crowd all against you, that's the making you know, or breaking point, it really is. And tactically, and, 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 and technically, she was perfect. And a breaking point for Katie Taylor, Darren, first professional defeat. Yeah, I, look, I'm so intrigued to see how she tackles this fight technically uh, and tactic, tactically, but mentally as well. How has that defeat, first career defeat, affected her? We know what a great champion she is, but I think November 25th, we find out something new about Katie Taylor. Well, on the way there, let's take a wander down memory lane and we'll start at Madison Square Garden in New York, April 2022. And Katie Taylor with a chance to cement her status as the undisputed lightweight champion of the world up against Puerto Rico's Amanda Serrano in this eagerly awaited showdown at one of the most hallowed arenas in the sport. And what action we saw unfold here, something very, very memorable. And we start here with this action in the fifth round, which is simply mind-blowing. It was, it was the, I've been to some big fights around the years and I was privileged to be ringside for this. One of the best atmospheres ever, one of the best fights I've been to. It was just, it didn't, it had everything. Just guts, determination, skill levels. Serrano was fantastic. She put it on Katie Taylor from the offset. You know with Katie Taylor, because she has lovely rhythm to her work, you've got to pressurise her, but to do that, and walking the punches is a risk most fighters don't want to take. But Amanda Serrano was willing to do that. She pushed Katie Taylor to the limits in every round. You, but you, you don't even put this in a category, do you, as, as male or female? Oh, this is fight. one of the best fights you can ever wish to, to witness. It, it was incredible. Not, like, not, to like, sorry, Dad, not to digress from how good the fight was, it was a unique atmosphere for a big fight like this because it was such a 50-50 split. Mm. When you get a big fight with a big name, it's always like a Canelo night or a, or a Calzaghe night or a Hat night, whatever it is, a Joshua night for sure. But this was 50-50 down yeah. the middle of the crowd. It was an unbelievable, like, fair atmosphere. And, it was, and then the fight lived up and gave the fans what they wanted. It was just tremendous. There was, there was stages early, I thought, this is, Serrano can't lose this fight. Like, she was looking so strong, relentless, possessed almost. It was just non-stop from her. But then back come Katie Taylor. It was just incredible, those blistering combinations. And every time either of them landed a big shot, like you say, that it was so split, the crowd, the, the, the roof was coming off the, the arena. It was magical. It was so special. We, we, yeah, we've been in fights, not, maybe not as tired as this, but fights where you just have to fight an instinct. And it was, I think tact, all the tactics went out the window for yeah. me. I think they, they fought an instinct from a wrong fall on especially Katie Taylor, because the pressure from Serrano and the weight of Serrano's shots was so much for her that she just had to just fight on what, on what she knew, just to fire back. All the, every time you get hit, you've got to fire back with the shot. You know, all the, the lateral movement wasn't there. It had to be work rate, work rate, work rate. It was just phenomenal. And the finish in the last round. Which is what we're watching now. Some of this is like watching a video game. <laughs> it's incredible. This is, this is what you call will to win. This is this is championship mindset. This you cannot teach this. Was, this is unbelievable. There was a moment there. We just saw it. But Katie Taylor's knee is inches off the floor. If that touches the floor, she loses the fight. The will to bring herself up from that close. That that's a special special fighter. That was so so close, as you say, and so many at ringside had differing opinions, but nobody begrudging Katie Taylor her success. Still the undisputed champion of the world at lightweight and up at super lightweight there was a chance for Chantel Cameron to become undisputed champion later in the year in Abu Dhabi up against the American Jessica McCaskill who herself had been beaten back in 2017 by Katie Taylor. 
It was. I remember walking to the media workout with Chantal Cameron before this fight, and she was fully focused on just becoming the undisputed champion. And I said, you know, you win this fight, and that can lead to a potential fight with Katie Taylor. And she had this little smile, as if to say, yeah, I've got to take care of business, but that's the fight I want. But. But in this fight, she, she boxed nicely. It was a, a little reckless from McCaskill, I, I think, throughout. She was, she was a little clumsy. She was desperate to win, but it was tidy boxing. I think a lot of good work was done from the lead hand of Chantel Cameron. The feet as well, you can see, she was just in total control of the distance throughout this contest. And like I say, jabbed her way to, to a good victory in this fight. And, and that's what it was. The, the, people were saying all the time McCaskill was looked awful. I think it was all Cameron did that, the good, solid jab, because it, it, it wasn't just a good jab, she was stepping in behind him, it was a solid weapon. And also, there, and then what Cameron did really cleverly was not get too greedy with the work. She landed with a good jab, and she wouldn't pile in with lots of punches, she'd take a step back, keep it just in her feet, because she knew McCaskill would fire off the old punches. Didn't give McCaskill, McCaskill really a target to hit. In and out with the feet, Good solid jab to, to line it up for the long right hand at times. And then when she had to dig deep in the later round, she, she was willing to let her hands go. I thought it was a perfect display against that opponent. It's yeah. almost as if she made McCaskill desperate. Yeah. She did, she 100% made McCaskill look, look very ordinary. McCaskill's a world class fighter, you know, unified champion and, and one of the best pound for pound in the women's boxing. And she made her look really novice. And that's, that's the truth of it. And all behind, and I say it all the time, the fundamentals. just. Not getting too clever with your work. Straight, solid jab, good long right hand. Keep adjusting your feet. You keep that distance in between you and your opponent. And, and the calmness in the world. Let's not mm. forget about that. The calmness, in the, again, a step up in levels for her. And it was a, relatively, I thought, you know, mentally an easy night to work for, for Chantal Cameron. Just a brilliant display, I thought. I, I was so chuffed for her. I didn't think, I thought she was a good fighter. I thought it was going to be a really difficult fight for her this night, and it turned out to be, except for the last few rounds where she had to dig deep, a, a, good, a good and a comfortable night. Yeah, she was smart. You know, she, did, she wasn't clumsy, she wasn't greedy, like you say. She was just beating McCaskill to the shot with her straight shots, and you could see what it meant to her and the team. And the reward, as well as the undisputed title, Darren, was the very fight that you were talking about in Dublin against Katie Taylor. And even though she walks to the ring as champion, she accepted the deal to walk first to the ring. She knew exactly what Casey Taylor meant to this whole occasion, but she held herself together so, so well. And I remember, again, we talked earlier about the different atmospheres in different scenarios. And here in Dublin on that night, sat at ringside, it was absolutely definite. It, it, it was. I'm real, it was deafening like you say and this, this fight was split a little bit I felt as well. A lot of people thought Chantal Cameron would just be too fresh, too big, too strong uh, and the experience some felt would be too great for Katie Taylor. When I see that ring walk though, I was convinced Katie Taylor was going to win. I thought she's not going to lose this. She, she looked so focused, this was her moment but what a start from Chantal Cameron. The first bell went, she was all over Katie Straight Taylor. Straight on the front. Straight foot. on her. Katie Taylor beats you on rhythm of her work. She jumps, she moves in up with her feet really well, and then she fires in three punch combination. Bam, bam, bam. There's not lots on the shots, but they're effective, and then she moves her feet back in straight lines. What Cameron did was walk her down, so when Katie Taylor took that step back, she's on the ropes. Yeah. So she can't, she can't get that bounce of the rhythm in her work. But what also what she did very well with Chandler Cameron is even though she pushed her back with the long jab, she never got too close to allow Katie Taylor to, to, to jump into attack. She was always a further enough away to take a half a step back and make Katie Taylor fall short quite often, I felt. I thought it was, this, this for me, tactically, was a perfect display for the The Belgian Delphine Persoon tried to put it on Katie Taylor, mm. but not with the same kind of educated work. She was always, always there to get hit. I'm, I'm, see, Katie Taylor is so effective, but actually the, what she does, she does in every fight, the rhythm is the same. It's hard to counteract. If you're physically strong enough, which Chandler Cameron is, and have enough weight in that left hand to push her back, and, and be the physical presence to walk her to the rope, you've got a chance. And yeah, I think she showed that's, that perfectly. That's exactly what you said there, that lead hand, the jab, exactly what she did in the McCaskill fight. That, every time she touched with that lead hand, she knew she could let the back hand go. She was working away. It was the jab again. I feel this time, Katie Taylor has to be first. She can't allow... Chantel Cameron to, to work away because she had a lot more success when she started rallying back 
with combinations. Look at these so. left hooks to the body as well, though. From oh, Cameron. You talk about the lead left hand, the left hooks to the body time and time mm. again. And she's sitting down on the shots. Where, where, where Katie Taylor's rallying with fast punches, you know, like she does so well, especially in these two minute rounds, Cameron's willing to sit down on the shots, not try and pick up the points to, to make those body shots tell, to make those uppercuts through the middle tell. And what Cameron did as well, she didn't panic. When, Kate, when Taylor had success and the crowd went crazy, she didn't panic. Including Conor McGregor in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fantastic cheerleader, isn't he? But, um, but that was it, though. she never panicked under any pressure. She always just thought, that's okay, I know, I know I'm going to get hit. I'm in, with, I'm in with Katie Taylor. Just as she's go stick to the plan. Hands high, we'll be on a nice solid jab. And then when she fires, I've got to punch with her. And that's what yeah. she did. When she fires, she punched with her. Absolutely. And, and seeing Katie Taylor there, there was, there was a lot of stages where Chantel Cameron was able to, to let three, four, five unanswered shots. It was kind of unlike Katie Taylor. She's got to mix fire with fire. She's got to be busy. She's got to be first if she wants any, any chance in this rematch. I mean, it was just so aggressive on the front foot from Chantel Cameron throughout the fight. And yeah, it was um, a really good display. This is for the super lightweight titles. Would we have seen a different fight at lightweight? I think maybe, you know, but who knows? You know, would we, see, would, would we have seen a different fight five years before if Cameron was a, was a little bit older, maybe? You know, you, you would say you know, that Katie Taylor is probably not in the peak of her powers anymore. But that's by the by. You, know, you, you can only fight what's in front of you. And she's, still, she's, fight, she's fighting Katie Taylor in Dublin. <laughs> you know, that's... That's a big enough task for, you know, for anybody, you know, but you know, she had to go up against it. You know, Katie Taylor will fight anyway. And Katie Taylor could have had an easy opponent and, 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 and had a fantastic performance and, and defended her world titles. She strived for, for, for more greatness, but, but she came up short. And I, and I, and I think you know, she showed the grit and determination we know she has, Katie Taylor. She always looks tired, but she always finds that energy to, to rattle off combinations, to fire when she looks and she's hurt. You know, she's, she's an all-time great. But on that night, Chantal Cameron was absolutely fantastic. Every time Katie Taylor took a bounce back, she stole her space with her front foot, just kept st stealing the space, stealing the space, putting her under pressure. And what, and what it proved is that in this, next, in this next fight, in this rematch, Katie Taylor has to change something she's never done before. Yeah, yeah I think a lot of it's up here in this rematch. Look at what? But because confidence is so high for Cameron. You think about Cameron, I mean, she, she's only lost a handful of rounds. I think before going into the McCaskill fight, she's only lost two or three rounds to Mary McGee. She goes into the McCaskill fight, wins it comfortably, and now she's just beaten one of the greatest, if not the greatest females of all time. On the flip side, Katie Taylor, she's just gonna have to exercise mental demons. You can see how gutted she is there. That's what I'm intrigued to see. And that first belt, who's mentally gonna be switched on? And I think this was a good result for boxing. Most people at ringside, although feeling it was tight, felt that Cameron had done enough to win, and she did get the verdict in Katie Taylor's home country. I thought that was a really good result for the sport on a night that was also great for the sport, and, and for the sport generally, not necessarily for, for women's boxing. So the rematch, November the 25th, do we expect anything different? I mean, it's gonna be a brilliant fight, I've no doubt about it. I, I, I find it very hard to go against Katie Taylor just because of how special she is, but this fight, I think it may be repeat. I just think that the, the freshness, the confidence of, of Chantel Cameron, the power, the just that massive self-belief. I just that if if Katie Taylor was to win this fight, I, for me would just be it elevates her to a level that I didn't think existed. Honestly, another you know elite uh, subhuman performance. But I just feel. Chantel Cameron may have too much for, for Katie Taylor. Yeah, I think so. I think it's important that Cameron doesn't get carried away with her success from the last fight. No, she knows she can push her back. She knows she can be stronger than, than, than Katie Taylor. And she knows how effective a jab can be. But if she gets carried away with that, so that's closing the distance mm -hmm. again. Then Katie Taylor can use that to rattle the combinations. What Katie Taylor has to do is, when she bounces in out of distance, she's got to start doing something pivoting on the, on the, after she throws, rather than bounce back, she's got to pivot or roll to the left or the right. Stuff she doesn't do. She, she was meant to do that in the pursuing second fight, she didn't, so she needs to learn in this fight. She does the same thing again, if, if Cameron can walk her back like she did so easily in the first fight, not easily, so effectively in the first fight, then again, Cameron's not, uh, Taylor's not gonna have that rhythm to, to do that work. So she needs to stay in the centre of the ring somehow, Katie, uh, Katie Taylor. 
against a bigger a bigger woman with a really solid left hand. It's not just a, a fast jab and an accurate jab. She steps with it, mm. Chantal Cameron, because she's naturally bigger as well. There's weight in that jab. That does all the work, for all the damage for her, and does the work to push Katie Taylor back. So I think it's a big ask for Katie. At this stage of Katie Taylor's career in life, it's a big ask. But great fighters do great things. So how does she respond as a great fighter to that first professional defeat? What has she got left at the age of 37, Katie Taylor? And how has Chantel Cameron grown as champion after that success earlier in the year? All the answers on November the 25th back in Dublin. What a night in prospect.